Writing compositions and producing audio is by far the most advanced part of my work, whereas my video production is often fairly simple and straightforward. However, I do put a lot of effort into making my video look good, and today I'm going to show you how I made this scene and how I'm going to edit the video footage afterwards. So, the very first thing that I do is that I place my keyboard in the middle of my living room, as you see here. And I place it like this, so I'm recording the video against my dark wall in the room that you're not able to see here. And I just plugged in my computer to record the MIDI file on. And now you see me set up the studio light. This is my main light that I actually put behind the keyboard, such that it's facing towards the camera. I also put on the little front light that you see here, such that the front of my hands is also lit up. That's a quite important light as well. So what you see here is that I put on some bed sheets in front of the windows. That's a real do-it-yourself solution for me, but it actually works nice. And I do that to darken the room such that I can better control the lighting. So now I just have to move the camera into position as you see me doing here. And then we can already see that the background of the image right now is very messy. So what I do is that I clean up all the stuff in the background and then I also put on a little light, a little lamp, just to give some depth to the image. In this case, we're not actually able to see the lamp so much, but it just gives something anyway. So this is basically the final image that I ended up with. There are a few issues with it. And that I'm just going to point out, first of all, we can see the bowl with oranges down here. That's usually something I would have preferred to remove. Also, with the angle I ended up with here, we are able to see through the door out on my shoes. That's also usually something I try to avoid. As you can see on this clip here, I've placed the camera in a way so we cannot see through the door. For now, let's uh, check out uh, the recording that I did. And let's also wipe all the color grading such that we only see the raw material with the raw sound recorded on my laptop. And then afterwards I show you exactly how I edit both the footage and the audio. Okay, so now we are on the computer here in the studio. I just uh, opened up the Logic project that I just recorded on the laptop in the living room. This video is not about audio production, so I'm just going to go through the export of the audio very briefly, but I just want to do a few steps to make the audio sound more like a final product. I want to add some reverb to the track and we can do that very fast here. And on the reverb track, we are going to load my favorite reverb. It is Lexicon Hall. And a good place to start is always the large neutral hole here with a reverb time of a little bit more than two seconds. Also, I already know that the reverb should go a little bit down. Of course, usually I would listen through it and adjust the volumes, but this should be a good starting point. Let's take a listen. Yes, so that already sounds pretty good. What I also want to add is a limiter, just to bring up the volume. And we use the classical music presets and play it while we increase the volume. Of 
course, if you want to see more about my audio production, then I have some other videos about that. You can also check out my piano production course, which is an online course available on my website where I teach exactly how I produce my music, also including producing strings tracks. So this is basically the final track that we are going to export. And we so bounce project. And let's just call it her final mix. So now we have exported the audio and we are ready to move on with the video production. So now we are in Final Cut. This is my video editing software. And the first thing we're going to do is to create a new project. And let's call that her video. Then we need to load down our clip here. We can find that here. And the first thing that we need to do is to cut the edges of the clip. So we only have the part that we need. And we can cut it around here. And let's cut that here. So now we have the part that we need. And then we can just synchronize the audio, which we can find here. Heard final mix. And the way I do this is that I find the first frame where I hit a key, which is here. And then I use the waveform down here to find the first key as well and align that with this frame here. So already this should uh, now be synchronized. Let's try to hear it. And that looks pretty good. Then also we need to bring down the volume of the video track that we're not going to need. So the first and most important thing I do to the video is color grading. And color grading can be a very advanced process, but we can also do a lot to the picture relatively fast. And that's what we're going to do now. So we select the clip here, select the color option up here, and then we select color wheels. And as you can see, I shot this video with what is called a flat profile. It means that the image is very desaturated and in very low contrast. So in the first step, we're going to try to fix that. We want to bring down the shadows here and we want to bring up the highlights like this. The midtones here, we want to bring down like this. So what we see is the image is still very desaturated. So we're going to increase the saturation a bit for all parts of the image. And then we're going to bring the saturation up even more for the highlights. So I still feel the image is very blue. So in the highlights, I'm going to add some red by dragging this little dot towards the red area here. So already now we can see if we turn this off, we have a much more balanced image. It already looks much, much better. So what I usually do is that I add a color board and I just want to do some exposure adjustments. And actually what I do now is that I flatten out the image a little bit again. And that's because I, I just kind of like the more low contrast feel. So this is before and this is with the new exposure settings. So actually we're almost already there. I usually end up by adding a lot, which is essentially just a color profile, a predefined color profile. You can compare it to an Instagram filter. And I use the ones from Lens Distortions and I really like the cashmere here, which I use on many on my, of my videos. And it makes the image looks like this. Then what I usually do is that I go back and do some more adjustments here because it does take out some of the warm colors. So I'm going to add a bit more of those. And then if we check out the full adjustments we did, this is before and this is after our color grading. So now we have to do some other adjustments to the image. And the first thing I want to do is to get rid of the oranges here. And there is a very easy way to do that. We're going to zoom out, choose the transform tool here, and then just drag it down. So we're zooming in on the image like this. So this is what we get instead. Then I usually try to darken this area of the video. And I do that with a template that I created, just an image with a dark area down here. 
the only thing we need to do is to adjust it so it fits this camera angle properly and we do that like like that so now what i want to do is to add the beginning of the video we want to add a transition and some text so let's start by adding the uh, dissolve transition here let's make it a little bit shorter and let's also cut the video a bit so it just comes in here Then what I want to do is to make the video blurred out in the beginning. That's an effect I usually use. And we start by simply adding uh, the effect to the whole clip and then we do something about it afterwards. So we want to add some text when the melody begins here. By typing Ctrl T we just get in the default text. And let's just write her and below music by Jacob's piano. Then I want to left align this and I want to change the font to Babas. Then I want to increase the size of her and I want to decrease the size of music by Jacob's piano. Let's reduce the line spacing and then let's move it out here and let's just adjust the colors a little bit so it's not completely white. Of course, we also want to add some transition to, to those titles. And we can do that by typing Command T. We just get in the transitions. And let's make it long and slow. Also in the end here. So I guess that's okay. So of course we need blurred effect here to disappear. And if we select the clip here and click control V, we can actually control and automate the effect here. It's the effect called Gaussian. And we can add some dots here and we can simply drag it down. We can right click here, click ease, so it will disappear more smoothly. And to make the text stand even more out in the intro of the clip, we can also decrease the opacity in the beginning and just synchronize it with the blurred effect like this to make it darker. And then now it looks like this instead. So I'm pretty satisfied with the beginning of the video now. So let's add the text to the middle part of the video. We can just copy this over here as I did. And let's add it here. Drag it out for the full video. And then I simply just reuse this text here and position it down here instead. Let's make it right aligned. And make sure that it fades in and fades out. So basically now we just have to edit the ending of the video and that is also a very simple process. Uh, first of all I want the text here to disappear. I want it to be gone around the last note that I'm playing which is this one. So we make a slow transition here. even slower. Then I want the blurred effect to come in again actually. Also slowly transition. And then at this point I want to add text once again. Once again we use the same text. Now we center it in the middle of the picture. We, we want to keep the music by Jacob's Piano here. And we want to 
make it a darker color like this. And then I want to add my logo. And we have the logo here. So let's just drag that down to the timeline. Let's position it properly like that. And let's click Command T on both clips here to make it fade in. We just want to delete the fade out transition here such that the whole video just ends on this image here. So basically now the ending of the video looks like this. So I was just thinking about some adjustments actually to the main image that I forgot to do. What I want to do is that I want to add a letterbox and a vignette effect to the video. And the best way for me to do that is actually to create a compound clip here. And it means that it saves uh, the editing we have made as a new video clip and we can make new adjustments on top of that. So now we have a new clip here without any effects on it. And then I want to add a letterbox, which adjusts these borders on the top and the bottom of the image just to make it slightly more cinematic. And I also want to add a vignette effect. I don't want any blur amounts. And I want this to increase the size. And we want it to be pretty strong. So if you see it without the vignette effect and then with the vignette effect. So this just increases the focus on the hands in the middle of the image. So this is basically our final video product. Now we are ready to export it. And we do that up here. Export file. And yeah, let's call it her video. And here we have the video. So let's now take a look at our final product. So that's it for this video. I really hope that you like the look into my video production workflow. And if you like the video, I hope you will like and share it. And if you haven't already, then also subscribe to this vlog channel. See you in the next video.